Okay, this is lection with a lection lecturer. Sixteen on assurance. Looking here again. Okay. It says theory allows formal proof of known security for components and collection components. Do you really think they actually test every item? What do you think? Policies, if they're you know, they basically allow us to test things is what they give us. Okay. Policy should be a security policy is a document that states in writing how a company plans to protect something. We are going for accreditation here at Rose State this next year and the year after. Do you really think they're going to sit in every class and watch every lecture and see how we teach everything? No. But they're going to read our self-study documents which, where we tell them what we do. And they're going to say, yeah, that looks good, or hey, you're slacking in this area, stuff like that. That's what policies are. Like, we have a password policy. Now, we have ways to enforce that, but, okay, drug enforcement policy, or alcohol policy on campus. Do we have a way to enforce that? What do you think? Policy says no alcohol on campus, no drinking. So how can they enforce that? Do you really think they're going to breathalyzer at every door? It's just be very tough to do. But, again, that's why policies help us, you know, basically it's the whole deterrence factor. Hey, you're going to get kicked out if you get caught doing that kind of stuff. Design principles are guidance stances that are relatively independent of these policies. Okay? You need to know each and every one of these. Every single one of these. You need to know that. Because every one is on the test. Positively guaranteed. Okay? Least privilege. It says the subject should be giving only the privileges needed to accomplish the task and no more. Okay? And this one you should know from all of your other cyber classes. Right. You should have seen this in multiple areas. So basically, I need access to my office. Should I be giving a master key? No. They did. But why? Right, I need, first of all, I'm here first in the morning. I work a lot on weekends. So I had to justify why I needed it in order to get it. But a normal person would not get that. Now, I still can't get into the maintenance closet, and I can't get into the dean's office, stuff like that, because I don't need access to that. You should not give anyone more than what they need. Fail safe to false. Unless the subject is given explicit access to an object, it should be denied access. Unless we let you in, you need to be denied. Die Hard 1, Nakitomi Plaza. Y'all seen that? Seriously? Everybody? You think? What happened in the, in the vault? The very last thing when they cut the power, it opened the vault. Is, should that happen? No. no. Now, if you think of it on the other hand, so if we cut the power on the vault, we want it to stay locked. What if Walmart? We lose power at Walmart. Should the door slam shut and lock? Probably not. So different cases need different rules as well. However, I would argue that your locks shouldn't be electronic in that way anyways. Right, they if should, power it goes should. out and it's open, it'll stay open. If the power goes out and it's closed, it stay closed. Well, that's why you can just push our doors. Okay. Economy and mechanism. Security mechanism sh should not, or should be, I'm sorry, as simple as possible. It has absolutely nothing to do with money. Do not tell me it's by the mechanisms you can afford to purchase. Every time someone tells me that. That's not the answer. Okay? Security mechanisms need to be as simple as possible. Because what happens when you make them too tough? People, can't use People, don't, use them. People don't use them. It takes a long time. You know what? It takes me 20 minutes to log into my machine anymore. And that's it. I'm just going to leave it unlocked all the time now. You know, change your password every three months so you stick it under your keyboard. Exactly. The perfect example. Okay. But no simpler. Now, we don't want it to the point where, you know, it's too easy. But we are getting easier. Complete mediation. All access to an object must be checked to ensure that it's allowed. Okay. A prime example is the FAA, TSA, whatever, airports. I must have been through 30 flights this year. Do you think I have to go through security every single one of them? Yes, I did. Every single one. And the best example of this, which I was actually very impressed with, I'm assuming you all flown before? Yeah. Does it 
you fly yet? I'm on TSA pre, so I got through. Okay. Yeah, this last time I really did not take off shoes, belts, or nothing. Just, yeah. But I'm, I've been pre-approved by the government. Okay, but that's what I was asking about. I yeah, know they do. I still had to go through a portion of it. They had to check my boarding pass and my ID. But once they saw that, then I could go so through a limited. But it's check. kind of when you get to the gate, you show them, and then you get to the front of the line. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. At the airport, you go through security. Well, other than you. When you're leaving, you know, you're in the gating area and you're walking out, there's always a guard looking this way and you walk past him going out. Okay? He's basically making sure you come out. And I was up there one night, really late. My son did one of those go to Europe with your school trip, waste the money, but he went anyway. I went to France and all the other places. Well, we're sitting there waiting for my son. His plane was delayed. It gets in like 1 in the morning. But the janitor was sweeping that hallway. Very impressed with the way they did here. He was sweeping the hallway and he dropped something. And he swept past the guard to the point where he's past him now. You know, I'm the guard looking ahead and he walks past me sweeping. Turns around and he realizes he dropped something. So what do you think he did? To go all the way back through the security check again to get that item. Now, could that guard have said, you know, I saw you drop that thing. I know it's you. Just go get it. You could. But then you're breaking this rule. Because that guard's job is, make, why don't you go past me? That's it. It's like this wall you don't ever go back through. And I was, wow. I mean, he saw the guy sweep it. He saw him drop it. But no, he says, sorry, you got to go back through. That's on the guard being an asshole. Right, he probably should have. He probably said, whoa, you dropped something. But, but still, I was very impressed, and he made sure to do it. The whole point with this, in every time you access a file on a network or a resource, you need to be checked. That's why we have taking granting servers and everything with Kerberos that any time I access it, you know, so what, I logged in at 7 o'clock this morning, and I've been working all day long, access a file in the afternoon, it still checks. Okay, open design. Security of a mechanism should not be dependent upon secrecy like DES. Should be bent on sound design like AES. Okay. Just because it's secret doesn't mean it's great. We got Josh over there who develops this new encryption mechanism, doesn't tell anybody. The odds of it being good are about as good if I developed it. It would suck. Okay? We're not mathematicians. Because I don't think you are, Josh. Hey. <laughs> but the point is, open design is the way you... I mean, you want people to look at it and look for sound math and sound design rather than secrecy. Okay? Separation of privileges. The system should not grant permission based on a single condition. Username only is probably not good enough. We probably want username and password. Least common mechanisms. Mechanisms used to access resources should not be shared. So the same mechanism that does something should not do something else. Now, does it mean we can't reuse code? I'm not saying that. But the same mechanism that controls the doors should probably not be the one that controls the air conditioner. Because if someone broke in the air conditioning system, well, then they have access to the doors. Kind of like Target. Okay. Psychological acceptability. Security mechanisms should not make the resource more difficult to access than if it were not present. Way back when, I had a cleaning lady clean our house. And I got tired of having to be there when she went to clean the house. But always had to be there and unlock the doors later in the house. I had a biometric door for my house. Would not use it. No. I was going to take her soul or something. She literally, no, 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 oh, no. I'm like, what's your fingerprint? Nope, wouldn't I use it? So I got rid of it. So, socks, okay? But if you make it to the point where it's too difficult, you know, or no, it's not good. Okay, so you need to know all those. The ones I just talked about, need to know. Need to know. So formal verification of the entire systems is not yet a practice. Could you, do you think we could positively check every component of whatever we're buying? 
You can't. There's no way. You know, when I was watching a video way back when of Microsoft, when they were rolling out Active Directory, this is in 2000, I think it was, they were talking about how they were testing these network cards. And to be verified and to have your driver included with Windows, you actually had to provide the card to Microsoft and the engineer to come to Microsoft and prove that it worked. But still, even with that, are you, can you verify that that card works with every other card on the market? You can't. I used to do beta testing for the uh, disk fragmenting software built into Windows. And I had an error one down in my system that says uh, corrupt volume, restore from backup. Is that a good error when you're trying to defrag your machine? No. And I, I could make it happen all the time. And the executive software, the company that made this stuff, was freaking out. Because I provided them, they're like, whoa, they'd never seen that error before. But that's bad. Okay? So they, they wanted me, they had me do all this testing. And I still remember they kept, they FedEx overnighted me like fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> But they were like, oh, we're going to send you something. Here, just, just keep, keep testing, keep testing. And what they finally came up with a fix for it. I did not like the fix whatsoever. It turned out it was my version of antivirus, McAfee version 2.9 something. With their software, it didn't work together. So their fix was a little note in the white paper that says, if you're running McAfee version 2.9 and you receive this error, ignore it. What kind of fix is that? Yeah, but the yeah. Problem is they can't test everything. That's why they do beta testing. Okay. Trustworthy. It says sufficient evidence to believe the system will meet. You know, pretty twist. You know, this whole like you know the new security thing I got, the TSA pre thing I got. It makes me more trustworthy because they already did a background check on me. That way, when I show up, they're like, okay, he's probably not a terrorist. So I'm somewhat trustworthy. Okay. Assurance, it says confidence the system meets the security requirements. Okay. So, you no, know, we're pretty sure it is. It's got a level what assurance. Often based on the development process. We're, we were a CMM level two, I think, when I was in the military. Based on the way we develop software, we were rated based on that practice. Because we had to have a peer review and all this other stuff and it was, it was the steps we used. It's kind of like, you know, think of hospitals. The way they sanitize their surgery instruments. I'm assuming there's a procedure for that. And based on the way they do that, allows them to do surgery. You know, I, I really doubt they would let me just wash the surgical instruments in my house. Because I don't know this procedure. There's really no assurance in the way I clean dishes. All right, a trusted system is evaluated and passed in terms of well-defined requirements and evaluation methods, okay? It's just like our accreditation. You know, based on what we tell them we do, which we should not lie, based on what we tell them, that's how we're evaluated, okay? This right here, this entire slide. Positively, everything with the exception of the titles on the test. Secure is binary. Okay. It either is secure. Okay, is that door secure right now? No, it's either secured or not. I mean, it's not, okay, it, it, it's almost closed, but still not secure. Okay, it's closed but not locked, but still not secure. So it's not secure until it's locked. So it's either is or isn't. It's a proper presenter. I can tell you this door is secured or not. It's absolute. It is or it isn't. I can tell you this door is locked, and we can prove that by testing it, okay? That's a goal. We would like secure systems, right? Trust is degrees. I might trust Josh more than Brett. It's Brett, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Kevin, you're trusting yeah. to have a master key so you can come in early. Right, they give me a master key, so I'm trusted more than probably nobody. But that's okay. There's <laughs> levels property of the receiver. So that's me. I'm the one who you're trusting me, so it's basically the property of me. How much do you trust me? It's not a binary concept. You know, it's basically a relative 
You know, Josh might totally trust me. Brett, not so much. Okay? And the characteristics, you're a very trusted person. You really can't say you're a secure person. It doesn't make sense. No, every one of those. That entire slide, with the exception of the title. Actually, you do need another title too. But you know it all. Okay. All right. That was number 16.